You're listening to The Dental Guys, Living on the Edge episode featuring Edge Endo Review, the file and operation system review you've been waiting for from The Dental Guys. We've been testing this system for almost two years and we're here to bring you our hands-on review of how does it stack up against the major brands and major competition. Is it as good or would we not let it near our patients? We're gonna let you know right here on The Dental Guys. Looking for a lab that understands the bridge between art and science? Check out the Dental Crafters Network. Dental Crafters, one relationship, infinite possibilities. Contact them at 1-800-472-8302 or at dentalcrafters.net. Do you want to learn to predictably place and restore dental implants using the most modern science and technology? We are talking 60 hours of CE in a comprehensive curriculum and live surgical implant placement on pre-selected patients. Head over to RestorativeDrivenImplants.com to learn more today. Well, hello and welcome to this episode of The Dental Guys. I'm John, The Dental Guy. And I'm Wes, The Dental Guy. And Wes, how you doing, man? This is a crazy time. Here we are. By the time this releases, we're getting into the dreaded September slash October potential downtime of what happened six months ago. I mean, mm. think about where we were, Wes, six months ago. We were in blissful, basically blissful ignorance. Yeah, was that uh, March? Of, we were like, wait, there's this thing happening. Meetings were kind of getting shut down, but we're like, come on. We had just got it's, back from AAFP. Yeah, like that was the first time I felt maybe a little nervous. Yeah. But nothing was really happening. Remember, in we the, went. We went on my wife's birthday party. We went up to Chicago, right? And I remember you being on the phone with uh, your son, or Kara was on there or something, and she was saying something about like he was tracking COVID, right? And there was like yep. one or two cases in Chicago. Yeah, and at in the time, airport, we were walking through the airport in Chicago. Mm-hmm. And it had just come out that like the first case I think had come to Chicago and we mm-hmm. were in the airport and it was like, Ooh, that's kind of weird. Like yeah. we're here and it's here near us. And then of course, right after that, which is especially weird. Let me tell you my last story of travel. We had some training with restorative driven implants. I was in Minneapolis mm-hmm. and you know where I was the week before everything hit the fan. I was in the mall of America. Yummy. And I was walking around in the mall of America. You know what I did? I saw a movie. What's that all about? I saw a movie. I went to a sushi place that had uh, Prince themed drinks that they make. It was awesome. I had the purple rain, by the way, in case Mm -hmm. anyone's wondering. And I was walking through the mall, but there was this little bit of an undertone Mm. while at the mall of people starting to get nervous that maybe they shouldn't be out in public because it might be coming. Well, six months ago, we shut down our practice on March 16th, right? Yeah. Yeah. Looking back to that, now the hygiene thing where even though we tried to bring everybody back in, right, and we tried Mm -hmm. to get everybody to reschedule in September, October, like normal, a lot of people did. And I got to give a lot of credit to our team, and I know your team and lots of other people out Mm -hmm. there have these amazing teams who made it happen for a lot of our patients. But you know, there's a lot of people that either couldn't do that or didn't want to do that or they're nervous or they Mm -hmm. didn't want to be on a closer schedule. So the question for you people out there, for you listeners, is how are you dealing with that now? Because I'll tell you, Wes, I'm taking some time off. I saw a few months ago this was coming. We talked about it Mm -hmm. and we both kind of said, you know what? I bet we're going to see a dip. Probably in October is what both of us kind of thought. So I decided I was going to take some time off. Didn't exactly know at that time what I was going to do. What about you? I mean, you're taking some time off? Yeah, I'm taking a week off. Yeah. But we're not shutting down completely, right? Okay. We've been staggering some vacays with hygiene, right? We've been just kind of encouraging them to, if they're going to take time off now, now is the time to take it in September or October um, versus waiting until, you know, waiting and saving it or whatever, you know, or... Because, I mean, once you get past October, it's guns blazing, right? I mean, it's, should gun, be. it's guns blazing. It should, should be. be. It should be. Yep. The, the thing that um, is interesting to me is, you know, 
I, you don't really know yet, right? How bad? I mean, we're trying to like roll numbers. It's like the it's like my, the accountant <clears throat> said the other day. He said uh, it's the hunt for Red October, and we're hoping we don't find it. Right? <laughs> That's and, true. And, That's and, true. That's good. And and I and I'm really we have this we we brought it up. We're bringing it up now. We have been for the last two or three months. We're not going to find Red October, man. We're going to do everything to make our business with That's intention. Right. Production yep. is going to be great. We're going to have new patients. We're going to fill chairs. We're going to do whatever it takes. Now, you know, I don't know what will happen, but right. we can Well, I'm already looking ahead at the schedule, and I'm seeing, even though I know everybody's worked hard, there are some open spots around that time yeah. that I think – we're, even though I'm taking time off, because we're shutting the whole place down. We're shutting down for one full week, mm -hmm. hygiene, everybody, because I knew, or I thought I knew, and I, I think I'm I think I'm right about our practice anyway, that we're going to need that because I don't think we would have a totally full hygiene schedule all month in October. So we're trying to condense. We're trying mm -hmm. to make it, you know, you're where running the schedule four is. You're running hygienists and... Right, right. And running, running three. Well, three to four. Mm -hmm. Most it's kind of two days four, two days three, mm -hmm. and and we're we're trying our best to to weather the storm through that. Not and again, the storm isn't the right word. It's not like horrible. It's just trying to think about how do you account for those people that just didn't want to reschedule because there was a percentage of them. And so so I don't know what what are you doing for when you with your time off, man? Are you like do anything? Well, we just we don't. don't know, man. That's the oh, weird oh. thing about this. It's going to be a surprise. This whole time. And like I've been telling my wife, like, hey, we need to take time off. We're I'm taking time off. Like, and we're taking yeah. time off, you know? Yeah. And we've just really put off planning, but we're spontaneous people anyway. So Yeah, and, you'll fake you'll 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 be like the last yeah, day so and you'll be like, Oh, we got this thing. Da, 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 somewhere, you know, we'll go somewhere and hump up for a while and um and have a good yeah. time, you know, doing it. So one of our kids has a fall break. The other one doesn't because of the school schedules and how they handled like COVID right now and all that kind of stuff. So we're just going to pull one out of school. She can do distance learning while we're on, um, on vacay. So what are you doing? Mm -hmm. So we are going, we originally were going to do a out West, uh, South Dakota, Man, you had North some Dakota. Big plans this year, and they got shut down. <laughs> oh, I, I mean, I can't, no, no. Well, this earlier this year, we I had know this what whole, you were planning. We, I am so, so mad don't, about it. Don't talk about it. Don't talk about it. We'll talk about I'm it. I'm so time. mad. I know. Why'd you have to bring it up? Because you were being my guinea pig. Because <laughs> I was going to do the oh, same thing. You know I can't believe I like you brought it up. It. Yeah, so, it sucks. So I had this massive trip, not even going to talk much about it. It was a massive don't, trip that was like a dream trip with a dream connection to some cool places over it'll in happen, another yeah. world. It'll happen. Not, yeah, it'll happen. I'll tell you about it when it happens because I'm so mad. Mm -hmm. But- so we're, we we were planning on South Dakota, Mount Rushmore, you know, Black Hills, stuff like. But it just wasn't. There was a lot of the logistical stuff. Hard to find places to stay out there. We didn't want to stay in hotels. Really, we wanted to do more like VRBO. Anyway, so what we ended up doing is we're going to do California coast. So we're going to go San Francisco down to LA. Do like Pacific Coast Highway. Easy to like stay away from stuff. Easy to get away. Mm -hmm. We got another family we're going with, and it's just going to be. Super, super nice. That's where I was originally from. I grew up there uh, until I was a teenager. So, like, I know some of the areas. Go back to, like, some of the places I was from. And my kids have never seen where I'm from anyway. So, we're yeah, going to do that. we talking about doing that for a while. So, that'll be yeah, a good time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so a great you're, time you're to do it. flying out there. Um, yep. We're going to do, like, San Francisco to L.A. basically down the and coast. And you're quarantining and, for, what, two weeks when you get there. And there's no quarantine back, there. Know, I'm just giving you a hard Thank time. God. Because we were going to do New England as we thought about first New England. Yeah. But they're taking it real they're seriously up there, man. They're very you can't strict. you can't even stay somewhere. So excited about that. But you know, Wes, this episode, I just want to tell listeners. Yeah. This episode we're about to talk, we're about to go through right now mm -hmm. is something we have been planning for literally a year and a half. Mm -hmm. A year and a half. And we don't usually do that because, but when it involves products, when it involves companies and mm -hmm. products and things that literally could change our practice, this is a major a major test that we, the dental guys have been doing for a year and a half now on edge endo. Yeah. We've not been supported in any way by them. They've no. given us nothing for free. Nope. We've not even talked to them about this, but we've been preparing 
Because what it was, about a, about a year and a half ago, I was like, Wes, I want you to do something for me. Because mm-hmm. I hadn't even told you that I had started incorporating some stuff from them. Mm-hmm. And I was trying it, and I was seeing some stuff. And I said, you know, I want you to just see if you try it out mm-hmm. on a limited basis. And if you like what you're seeing, or even if you don't, like, I want you to try a couple of things and see what you think. Mm-hmm. So here we are, year and a half later, with the Dental Guys official review. Yeah. Of Edge Endo products. You know, so well, after this you, message from our sponsor, we're going to get right into that. I know you're excited about this, John. I am too, and it has been in the works for some time. So, right after a word from our sponsor, we'll get right back at it. Hi, I'm Justin Goodbrand with Financially Simple. So, perhaps you're considering buying your first practice or your second, third, or fourth. Here's a tip for you many dentists just like you become business owners every year but should you buy a practice before you make this really deep commitment envision your dream how exactly does your future practice look where is it located are you in a big city or in the country like me how many treatment rooms will you have what is the color of your logo what is the patient flow in this practice if you can clearly envision your future then your chance of success in reaching your dream is greatly increased For more information about this and other dental-related topics, visit financiallysimple.com forward slash dentist. This tip is for informational purposes only. Please speak with a competent financial advisor regarding your specific needs. Justin Goodbread is a registered investment advisor with Heritage Investors. Visit heritageinvestor.com, financiallysimple.com for additional information. Okay, and we're back. (laughs) Um, Here it is. You've been waiting for it. You you hopefully didn't fast forward there on through the sponsors because that's who keeps this rolling. Who is so Edge here it goes. First, John. Wes. Who is Edge who Endo? Is, right? That is a great question to start with. I mean, when did mm-hmm. this company kind of get going? When what are they about? Mm-hmm. You know, so so Charles mm-hmm. Goodis started this company. Yeah. I think that's how you pronounce his name. And, you know, this this company goes back, I think, to uh, several years ago where we started getting these mm. advertisements and they were very, very bold, right? It was like your endo company is basically screwing you over, taking advantage of you, charging you so much and you don't need to pay twice as much for equal quality. We Their claim was we'll give you the same quality or better at half the yeah, price. Yeah, so... This guy has a mechanical engineering degree from Michigan. So, you know, there's not, I mean, this is, this is, this is somebody, he's an endodontist. And he's an endodontist. He he has some knowledge here about how things work, you know, how, how metal, largy, metallurgy, right? How it works. Yep. Yep. And there is no doubt, right? And we're going to get into the specifics here that he has done testing to show that there are some, that they can put their files up against against manufacturers. Now, the question is, John, right. right? Because let's start with the baseline, right, of where we were mm-hmm. up till we switched to Edge Endo doing our – you all know. Wait. Right. And we're not going to tell you to the end whether or not right. we stuck with it. You have to listen through this whole thing because we're going to mm-hmm. unpack some things because there's some things we really like, other things we didn't. So when we switched, I think that's a great place to start, Wes. What were right. you using before you started trying Edgendo products? Let's talk about mm-hmm. your hand files, your rotary files, and your obturation and your sealer. That Just the big four, if you will, because we're going to focus on the endo side. We'll talk a little bit about some of the other products because we did try a few other things, but mainly the endo. So Wes, yeah, what were you using with, um, and, and kind of what did you I switch to? I have been for the last say 10 years, let's say, okay, a Tulsa dent supply, you know, junkie when it comes to endo, right? I mean, Tulsa literally is right up the road from us, right? It's like 30 minutes from John's right. house, an hour and a half from me, where they make the files and they hand roll the 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 uh, paper points. And I mean, you know, so we're, le- <laughs> we're leaving, right, the, 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 the motherland, the mothership in our backyard and saying, we're going to go over here and try this guy's stuff. So I was a wave one gold user. Okay. Wave one gold. I used a 
any on I used K files for for my patency and and reciprocation, basically tens and fifteens and twenties. I mean, those are my workhorses, right? And I would bounce between Patterson brand and Tulsa Dent Supply brand K files all the time through the last fifteen years of my practice. I used um, Wave One. I used Wave One gutta percha points. I used Wave One uh, matched tapered. Uh, uh, paper points. So I've used, I mm-hmm. have the gutta core oven. Okay. I've even got the Tulsa dent supply motor that does the reciprocation. I've got mm-hmm. it. Okay. Got all that stuff. Right. But you know, my bleach yep. and my EDTA, you know, my EDTA came from Tulsa dent supply. Okay. My yep. um, MTAD comes from Tulsa dent supply. Um, my bleach comes from Target, <laughs> but that's where <laughs> I pretty much started. John, I think it pretty much caps it off right there for me. Where, where were you at when you, when you switched? Yeah. So I had been, um, I've been kind of on a similar path to West, which is funny long before we knew each other. And we were always, um, both of us into Tulsa Dent Supply. A lot of it was because mm-hmm. of Steve Buchanan and Cliff Ruddle, who kind of, uh, gave us, a lot of our start in endo, uh, so much love out to them. Ruddle's not doing a whole lot anymore. I, I hate that, uh, but he's done. He's done great. Buchanan's still doing a ton. But you know, they both were this company kind of committed to innovation. We believe in them. We still think there's a lot of great things with that that company as well, which we'll get into later. But um, I used GT files love when it. I got out of school. Then moved to GTX, which is uh, one that. Um, Buchanan really was uh, got me into, and uh, then I started as I got more experience because GTX was a great file system for somebody who was still learning, uh, and, but still could be safe. But also, and we've talked about this in our previous Endo episodes. Mm-hmm. If you go back to the world's longest root canal, this was a lot of episodes ago, but it really should give you a good basis on why we would choose like a radially landed system or non. Anyway, I moved over to Pro Taper. Uh, about probably five, six years ago, maybe seven years ago, because of a Ruddle course I took that I really liked a lot of things about it um, and other courses that I've taken. And so I had been a pro taper person for several years and uh, loved everything about it, had very little issue with it, wasn't unhappy. And that's the thing I think we mainly want to talk about here is we weren't unhappy with what we were using. I was having good success, not having issues. I was using um, good old uh, ZOE sealer, nothing too fancy, works, um, and uh, was using either uh, a single point obturation uh, with like a, with at that time, way, when we kind of really got into single, single point was using when bioceramics became a thing and I was using Brassler's bioceramic sealer um, when I was doing single point or using gutta core, uh, obturators. So it depended on the case. And I used like the touch and heat, uh, from, uh, Kerr to, uh, to, to, to deal with the uh, single point. But a lot of my stuff was obturator based, carrier based obturation. Um, and then occasionally single points if we had like some difficult canal anatomy. So I never really got into reciprocation. So that was kind of cool because Wes was doing reciprocation. My associate does the reciprocation. Mm-hmm. That's what he knew. And I was doing rotary with, with pro taper. So we all kind of had like some similarities and some differences in what we started with. Um, and even to hand files, like I was using C files from a uh, Tulsa dense supply C plus files, which is a stiffer version of the K West is using K's. So it was a great starting point for us to kind of compare notes. So when, you, when I switched, when I started using <clears throat> the edge stuff. But my main thing was rotary files, right? My main question was rotary, but I wanted to go through the whole series. So I got the edge C plus files, the hand files, or they're I think they're mm-hmm. just called C files when you get them from edge. I got the um, edge. If you look at their website <clears throat> and you want to choose a compatible file mm-hmm. system, you basically go to their website, you look at their product page and it will talk about the different types of files that they have. You know, what are the compatibility? So if you're used to using ProTaper, um, they have Mm -hmm. uh, Edge Taper, okay? If you're used to using Wave 1, they have Edge 1. And then they also have within those different types 
of metallurgy. They have like a, you know, heat treated and then they have non heat treated. Um, you know, they, it's called fire edge one fire edge one platinum. So I switched over to the ones that were compatible with what I was already using, but they have several systems, whether you're used to using, you know, GTX, whether you're used to using vortex, vortex blue endo sequence, um, a lot of the most common, but the two that I chose for the practice were the ones we were already using. I said to my associate, give this a try, replace the wave one files you're already using with these. And then I'm going to use the edge taper. I also switched over to the glide path file, which is uh, kind of similar to what Densupply has as the pro glider, um, which essentially is kind of like once you achieve your working length, it does the work of like a 10 and a 15 and also does a little bit of orifice shaping as well. And then I decided to, I would try, uh, I didn't, Wes has tried their sealer. We'll talk about that. But I tried their obturators, the um, uh, the gutta core style obturators and some of their gutta percha and also their paper points. So I kind of went over everything. And Wes, you did that too, but you chose, you also tried their sealer, right? And then which was the file system that you uh, replaced your your wave one with? Was it the platinum edge or the one fire, fire edge one? I, and I was just, just looking to making sure that's what we've been ordering is edge one fire. And um, <clears throat> yep. and that is the Wave 1 Gold. Now, they also have the Edge 1 Platinum, which is just a little different, you know, variation on metallurgy. I think there's some other things there. I won't, I won't get into the specifics on that. So, and I'm using the Bioceramic Sealer. I'm using the Paper Points. I mean, essentially, basically, I copied and pasted everything that I was using with Dent Supply. Okay, and and went full in. I even went, and we'll talk a little bit about yep. this later. I even bought their round burrs, right, for access, the carbide burrs, right? And so I went full in because John was like, just go in, do it, and then we'll get back together someday and talk about it, right? Yep. And, um, and here we are. We're talking about it. And really, we haven't really, we really haven't talked much other than just a little bit before no, the we show. We made a point we, not to. We yeah. made a point. Yeah. Yeah. We made a point not to share notes because I didn't want to color mm -hmm. Wes's opinion. He didn't John, want to color my opinion. Let's just start with simple here. So right? I said, let's just start let's try with it. like simple. Yeah. You open up the, you open up the canal and you, you, you're going to get some patency, right? So you're using C files. I'm using K files. Who cares, right? One stiffer than another. So what did you think about your their C files, the Edge C file, compared to that of what you've used in the past? Yeah. So I really liked the C file. I I've tried a couple of different um, a couple mm -hmm. of different hand file uh, C files from different companies, and. Um, I'd always use pretty much the Densupply ones or what I kind of settled on. Although there are other companies that I've used that were good. Um, but I really liked, uh, I liked the Edge C file. I, th I thought the stiffness was good. The only thing I did not like as much was the stopper is a little yeah. more flimsy. So it moves around a little bit more easily. Definitely a cheaper grade and of whatever it is, rubber, stoppers, plastic, whatever. Let's just say it right now. I'm just going to say this because we haven't talked about this. They have yep. the cheapest, flimsiest stoppers I've ever seen in my entire life. They, yeah, except for what you get from like the yes. Safco generic brand, or they're, they're a little a better. They're a step that, up, but from I mean, that. like from stamp again, we're co but compared to Dent Supply. It's like when you set yeah, a stopper on a Dent Supply C or a K file, like, did you? you it, it's there. Yeah, it's there. Right? It, it, right. It's not going anywhere. No, I agree. I agree. And I think that that was the thing I liked with the C file stiffness and the flexibility. I would put it on par with what I'm getting, what I was getting before. So I feel like that to me was, it was a wash, but you, you had a little different experience yeah. with the K's, which yeah, I really haven't used a lot of the K files. But if you want, I was just looking at a website, they have K nine ties. So if you want K nine ties, I've got it. I've not tried them. I don't use K nine ties. I've used K and C over my life. K files is what I've just really stuck you know, stuck with throughout my career. They're K files, man. I don't like them. In fact, like, okay, so here's a great story. The other day I was talking to my associate because he comes in, he's a wave one user like John's associate. And he's done a lot of wave one. He learned on wave one in school. And then he practiced two years doing wave one out of school and done a lot of endo in the clinic that he was in. So I, yeah. I put him in on this too. 
okay, here in the last two, three months, okay? And so I asked him the other day, I said, so what do you think about Edge? I said, first, let's start with just the K files. And he was like, I feel like I'm going to break one. And I'm like, yep, mm. that's kind of what I thought because I feel like that I could unwind that file. Now, I've, I've, now, have you? Have you unwound one? I have, have you not unwound, unwound one, but I when you're working. definitely, because I, okay. I pull, I mean, I use six O's, you use four and a halfs, we're looking at files, and I'm pulling that file out, and I'm like, dude, that shouldn't unwind, and I'm not saying Tulsa's files didn't unwind whenever I'm trying to get patency, right, or navigate some tight canal, you yeah. know, but I'm like, that shouldn't have unwound that soon, and it was kind of flimsy, it just didn't have the... The stiffness, that's the word right there. And so here's what okay. I'm thinking, John. Okay. I'm thinking that if I went to the C file, right, which is what you're using, yeah. I'd probably be okay with what w the results I would get. So if you're used to the Tulsa, okay, K files, and you move over to the edge, yep. and you're not used to a flimsier file, right, then you're not yep. going to be you're not going to be happy. You may want to consider moving up to the C file instead, which I think you're going to see comparable results um, in that. So, John, yep. you know, would I recommend the the K file for current users? You may see them be they're a little more flimsy, and I will say that stopper. I'm gonna bring it back up again, right? Because that's one of the things on my list. The so stoppers are not great, right? They're not great. Yeah. I agree, and that even with the C file, even though I like the file stiffness, I and, and on a hand file, I'm okay <clears throat> with the stopper not being perfect if no, the I mean, file that's not stiff. A deal breaker. As long as the stopper's the stopper's not sliding around, you know, I, I'm okay with it. Um, and and the markings on the mm -hmm. file are pretty easy to read. I do like that. Now let's contrast that. Let's get into rotary or reciprocation mm -hmm. because after you gain, you gain your patency, and I'll, I'll maybe say. Before I say that, you know, typically, and we, again, go back to our old endo episodes. We're not going to go through yeah. our entire check that out. thing here on how yeah. we treat a root canal, but we got it all there. But what I typically do <clears throat> is I use the SX file mm -hmm. after I am able to achieve, you know, a, a basically I, we secure the canal as 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 uh, Cliff Ruddle would say with a hand file to whatever distance you can get it to, and then I bring an orifice opener like the SX, big canals. Uh, and then I'll use. Yeah, I mean, as as big as you, you can get without blowing it out like with the gates. Eight you know? millimeters, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we don't want a huge, but I think yeah, it's creating. It's it's you have to be safe, <laughs> so right? You have you to a hard get time. good glide path. Yeah. <laughs> and then, yeah, I like this big. I bl I want to remove as much dent as possible. <laughs> because that's you my place <laughs> that's my goal. As much cementum. <laughs> <laughs> that's right i'm just trying to get i'm trying to do my osteotomy it's the beginning right. of my osteotomy how many patients is my orifice well opening. we had five endos scheduled we set up four <laughs> and we had to yeah we did four <laughs> implants and awesome. one root canal yeah <laughs> it was worked out great so yeah so i i i do go in there and i've been using for the last couple of years even before i switched i was using um the uh the glide file. path file or the Pro Glider, I'm sorry, the Pro, Gu Pro Glider from Dent Supply, and so I switched over to the Edge yep. Glide Path, the gl Pro Glider from Tulsa well, Dental, and, and it's a quarter of the cost, right? And what this does is, once you get your ten to whatever length you're going to, it's going to get you like almost like a step back to a larger uh, uh, starting point, so you're you're already close to where you need to be. So hand files, then I'm using the Glide Path file with the SX. And then we get into rotary reciprocation. So, Wes, talk about your experience with the Wave 1 version, the Edge 1 Fire. Uh, what has that been like as far as performance, as far as, you know, fatigue, uh, instrument separation? You know, kind of go through your whole experience with that. Talk about what you like, what so, you didn't like. First of all, you have to understand what kind of endodontist I am, right? I'm not an endodontist, but what I'm saying, what kind of... So I'm really, okay, so let me just tell you how I use my files, okay? You could go back and listen to this episode, but I think it's clear, like John, to, to understand how I use my files, okay? So what I do is I go to patency, and then I may use the glide path file, right? If it's, you know, if, if I'm not saying I use it every time, but if I drop a 10 in and it drops through the apex, right, then I'm not mm -hmm. using the glide path file, Okay. 
If I drop a 10 in yep. through the apex, golden. If I drop a 15 and it drops through right. the apex, I'm getting my working length, I'm golden. I'm going right to whatever size canal, which that's most of the time yellow or red. Correct. Okay. If you're a wave one user, user you yep. know yellow or red. Yellow's small, red's primary, and then you got white or black, whatever you want to say. Don't don't get mad at me, right? It's small, medium, large, people. That's what they've done. Okay. Yep. Keep it simple, stupid. Yep. So here's what here's my here's my goal. So I put the 15 in there and get my length, come out, irrigate. Okay, flood the canals. I go right in with whatever whatever edge fire, you know, that I pick out. Say I'm picking out yellow. So I go in with the yellow. I go until I meet resistance. I come out. I clean and check my file. I go right back to irrigation, and then I reciprocate with a 15 to patency. Okay? And then I go in, yep. meet resistance, <clears throat> and then I come out with my reciprocating file, and I go back, irrigate, and get patency again with a 15. It is like that every single time. You will not see me pump, okay, a wave one file or mm -hmm. an edge one file. Now, there are people that pump, okay? I do not, right. okay? You can talk to people that invented these files, and they say you can leave these files in a canal for an extended amount of time. We're talking many, many seconds, right? I'm not that guy. So I'm yep. not hard on files. I've separated very few files over my career. Knock on wood, less than five in my career. Now, you would say hogwash. Well, that's me, right? I'm just telling you, I do not push it. Okay, if I don't get an orifice yep. shaped, and um, and it's I just don't push files. Okay, so I want I prefaced all that with saying I have not unwound one single edge file. Okay, meaning like mm. reciprocating file. Wow. I have not seen, I thought I unwound one the other day. It was a yellow canal, which that's where you'd think you'd unwind it. And it had a 90 degree turn. And I didn't even know until I looked back <clears throat> at the CT that I'd negotiated a 90 degree turn. I'm like, that thing is 90 degrees. And I'm looking at that yellow yeah. file and I'm pulling it out. And I'm thinking, this thing's going to have to unwind, right? Because I'm telling yep. you, I've unwound wave one files and i catch it because i'm looking at that thing every single time so hold hold on hold on let me stop you here for a second are you saying that you have had better performance we from the edge we than the sum wave all one? that up to saying that i think i think this is anecdotal okay in in my yeah, hands that's okay right i've had better performance i cannot i've not unwound a file yet right so which kind wow. of what about efficiency of cutting? Do you feel so like it's the same? So I knew we were doing speed, this episode, the, so I decided a couple people needed root canals just all of a sudden. So last week I did two root canals just because I wanted to. <laughs> Pulped out on a couple people. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> hey, I need to I was a really test. paying attention like the efficiency Sorry. in cutting. And so I'm I'm in this canal yeah, it's like yeah, a seventy yeah. year old, right? And I'm thinking Yep. Yeah, it's a number 12, you know, it's one of those, right? You're like thinking, yeah, this could go either way. 12s and 13s are, I mean, to me, they seem easy, but sometimes they're hard. So it's a two canal 12, yeah. all right? With these little, yep. tiny little things I could see, right, on the CT, and I'm thinking, oh, gosh, I got patency, no problem, right? Mm -hmm. And I was just paying attention to how efficient this thing was cutting, and I thought... If this is really going to take me a little longer, dude, again, anecdotal case report right here, podium preacher, <laughs> whatever you want to call me, <laughs> right? What I'm That's telling right. you, I have seen better efficiency in the cutting of these, okay? I've seen less fatigue. Yeah. It yeah. makes me, even my associate and I were talking about this, it makes me want to reuse these files after you autoclave them, right? It makes me want to do that for the first time in a long time. Right. And I know people that are cutting the cutting the swelling part, the the colored part off of the wave ones. I know they're cutting it off. Right. Right. I know they're cutting it off. And you know who you are. You're cutting that off and you're autocrating right. that thing and you're not supposed to because it's a single use file only. 
I'm not a single. I'm not a single use. I'm a single use guy, right? And I used to be with GTX, right? right. right? With GTX, John, were you single use? Right. Yeah, always right. been single use. And you, you would use a file, you throw it in the trash, and then you'd restock and put them in the auto Absolutely. Clave, right. Yep. Yep. I've always been single use, you know, and that's something that that's something too to recognize if you're a Wave One user that these files don't. They're different. The packaging is different, right? So the so they so you're gonna autoclave these files which I don't think before you use them. Packaging's terrible, which is okay. Yeah, and right, and the packaging we can talk about. Packaging is not as good. The packaging from Dent Supply, you're paying for uh, definitely a better better packaging and having the pre sterile ready to go. I don't know. I think it we in my think, opinion, I'm, I'll make the categorical we, statement. I think it's stupid when you're paying this, especially you're paying this much less for a file, I would rather use two and never and throw them away than use no, than I'm try to reuse them. How but many I, it is interesting. Are pulling those files out of the package, John, <clears throat> and stare. Oh, and never yeah, auto clave. Ooh. Oh. Like yeah, what, don't what, do that. What, what is I would I would I'd like to know. I probably would nobody's gonna tell us, right? No, people won't admit it. People won't admit it. But I bet you're right. There's probably people who are doing that. Just don't do that anymore. Yeah. Stop it because that's not cool. And I hope nobody ever, OSHA doesn't catch you doing that. That's bad news the bears. Packaging's terrible. But let me talk. Let me. So, so efficiency you I feel no like is equivalent. It. Shaping's excellent. And you're not, not separating files. If they're not unwinding. So, so my experience has been <clears throat> with Pro Taper, I switching to Edge Taper. I'll tell you. I don't feel like I've yeah, seen a bit of difference. A bit. I mean, I don't think I don't think it's better for me. So you're saying yours might be even better. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. For me, using the pro the the edge taper, <clears throat> I don't feel like it's any better. But I don't. I definitely don't feel like I'm giving up anything. I don't yeah. feel like it's any worse. I feel like it's equivalent. I'm seeing equivalent cutting efficiency. Um, which I mean, pro taper was always very efficient. It's a very quick system to use. Um, I'm not seeing issues with unwinding. Have I separated files? I have. I've separated two files in two Where did years. It separate That's at? it. And I really mean that. I'd separated up uh, more great. toward the That's hub. That's where you wanted to bring. Uh, higher up, which was what you wanted. I had one I couldn't recover and I had to refer, but I had one mm -hmm. I could recover from. So that I was able to I was able to bypass it and I was able to remove it. Um, but I have had no difference in the, in success rate. And we do, let me, to give you an idea. So in my practice, mm -hmm. we do a lot of endo. And average month, I was doing running some numbers this week, preparation for the show. Average month, we do about 12 root canals a month. So 12 to 15, depends on the month. We've had some, like I did two today. You know, then we'll have some months we do more, but it's 12 to 15. So yeah, not like doubling. crazy, right? But, work, but working... Yeah, but working, you know, 15 to 16 days a month, we're doing on average a root canal a day between me and my associate. So we do a fair amount of endo. I like doing endo. I'm one of the only people in my town that doesn't refer everything out. So I think that's part of it. Um, but uh, so we like doing endo and it's a pretty good track record with, you know, a few hundred root canals uh, since we've been using them and we've only had two separations. So I don't feel like I'm giving anything up from an efficiency standpoint and from a uh, file separation standpoint, I feel just as safe. They do, I have had a couple unwind, but I like that. I'm like, if it unwinds, I'm like, great news, man. Like you're the file unwound, I throw it away, I get another one. I'm happy with that failure mode. Um, I feel like they do unwind a little easier in my hands than what I got with the dense supply one, but I think mm -hmm. that's just how they're made. Um, the dense supply ones, if I ever had a failure, it was almost always a complete mm -hmm. fracture. They wouldn't really unwind as much on me with Pro Taper, but I feel like the uh, Edge Taper will unwind before it fractures. They don't unwind a lot, but if they do, I'd rather have that. Um, I'm real happy with the uh, the Glide Path file. I mean, never had an issue with that file, never once, um, and I've used those a ton. So, what I don't like, okay, what I don't like, there are two things, right? One is the shank, or I should say like the hub of the file. So if you look at the part that is up at the top, right, where the, the, uh, uh, where the file goes into mm -hmm. the rotary motor, the gold part, if you will, 
that is about two millimeters almost longer than what pro taper mm -hmm. is. So what that means is instead of me having, you know, a let's call it 30 millimeter long from tip to mm -hmm. handpiece, I've now got, you know, 32. If I'm using mm -hmm. like a 25 millimeter file, I've got I an extra couple of millimeters. So if you're working on like right there, right? I don't know. Maybe it's patent or maybe yeah. it's just I a metallurgy thing. They made it a little different. You brought different. that up a, earlier, and I, I noticed that too. Actually, the first thing I noticed was like, hmm, is that seated in the chuck, right? I mean, like when you put these, yeah, when you that's put that what on I there, first. it's like, hmm, is that seated? And I'm like checking it, right? So when you when you buy these, right, because yep. I know some of you are going to like buy these now. Um, and again, we're not getting paid by Edge Endo to do this review. Okay, like they didn't even, nope. we didn't even nope. know we're doing this. So I'm like wondering what they're going to say. But nope. like this is a non-biased review. And what we're telling you here is that John's not seeing, John's not seeing much difference here, right? Yeah, you got the, you got a little longer shank. Yep. You might have a little limited opening. Right. And, and I will say the laser yeah. markings on, instead of having black, nice, very vivid uh, length markings, like what Densply has, which I love. The edge files have like a etching on the file, but it's the same color. It's kind of as deceiving, the file. right? Because I'm looking at so their edge taper thing it on is. their website, and it's like, dude, did they cut and paste this off of Tulsa's website? I think they that kind of bothered deceiving. me too. I feel the same. It is it, when you look at it on the website. It kind of it looks like it's a like a little gray. So, marking it is not it is it is just like a it's just milled it is. like a little Isn't ring milled into the file we found out which when about you each other tonight is that i don't rely on the markings at all like i'm well i i just use them to set my like if, if my so my do. assistant will do. have they'll have an estimated length right and i'll have those preset but it's it's just harder like if you're moving stuff around from file to file it's like where i start Wait, I mean, so it's you, a little are annoying you, are you the kind of a dentist that walks into the operatory ready for your endo and you're like melinda have you checked your working links on the ct and preset all of my files i need the sx set is it set to 17 millimeters because if it's not i'm walking out. oh yeah i don't come in the room until all the files are set at the estimated working length. Not all the files, but I and have her not, preset you're taking the like SX, files and you're the S1. Them. And, like, <laughs> and I throw them at her eye. I'm like, yeah, you'll, you'll, you'll think about that <laughs> She's already time, got one eye patch. Yeah, she's already got <laughs> one eye patch. Figured I might as well just take out the other. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm not a dentist who throws things. I mean, she yeah, is amazing. My assistants man. are amazing. But they do Man, preset file links, so and that's so it does slow it down for them. Yeah. I know, well, I am. They're amazing. It just makes me faster, you know. But but I I feel like that is not a, of course no. not a deal breaker. It's just a little annoying, especially when you're looking through loops with light. Hey, there's listen, a little these reflection are there. I anyway, think blah, blah, that blah blah. We would put up with right, based on what we're telling yeah. you right now. Whether you're going to choose the edge taper, or the or the edge fire one, or edge fire one platinum you know whatever right these what we're <laughs> telling you right now is that we can't really discernibly if you handed us a tulsa file and hand us this the only way we're going to be able to tell you the difference in a blinded study is probably mm. so minuscule that we couldn't and while you and while you bring up yeah. studies just real quick because people will ask, and well, there's no the data. Study? Where's the data? In Johnson City. Yeah. Dude. They did some studies in Johnson City, and which is where Telsa stuff is. And they have a great study in the Journal of Endodontics, published mm -hmm. in 2019, which is cyclic fatigue and torsional failure of edge taper platinum uh, at simulated body temperature. So they were, they were looking yeah. at Pro Taper Gold, which is the, the newest Pro Taper, versus edge taper platinum, which is what I'm using. And they, they chose the 25 tip size. And I know this is artificial canals, but that is just the yeah. way like they test this stuff. And they found that the platinum, the edge taper platinum, had better cyclic Actually, fatigue all resistance. Them, all their files but it had, right, are rated. Right, but had lower, right, exactly. And, and they showed, I mean, they showed a ton of, they t a ton of data on that. And there's also another study in the Journal of mm -hmm. Clinical Experiential Dentistry, 
which looked at the night different heat treated night tie files wave one gold versus edge one fired and they they said that the fire wire instrument was two times more resistant to cyclic fatigue when compared with the gold treatment now again you can pull out a lot of these studies right and sometimes they'll they'll favor one over the other I mean, how much pressure is applied matters yeah. a lot. Are you testing in plat? But I mean, the bottom line is here: these are at least on I just par can't, from a, I on can't the tell bench you top. not to go try and, these in our products, hands okay? because the cost, right? Yeah, is so much. Yeah, less. it's stupid. It's so much less. It's ridiculous. Now, yep. Okay, we're gonna have some caveats here because we want to. At the end of this show, we're gonna talk to you about the risk. Right? There's some risk here. Mm. Okay, and we're going to talk about that. But talk about talk about yeah. sealer, so sealer and obturation, like, Wes, because the files that we covered. I don't want to get into that. bioceramic sealers versus ZOE, all that stuff. Go back and listen to our whole sealer episode. Just know this: I've yeah, been using did the bioceramic a whole series sealer. on that. It's great. It's fine. Okay, it does. You're talking edge about the edge bioceramic. Okay, one. so it's fine. Don't. I can't. No tell difference, a difference from what you've okay? seen. Okay, so it's fine. Now let's okay. move on from sealers. Okay. Okay. Because, because I want to move to okay. Because I haven't it's used fine. the sealer, so I, I, that's why I fine. wanted to hear your thoughts. Okay. It's okay. fine. <laughs> it's gonna be fine. You're gonna be fine, right? They said. So right. the the All thing right. that I think that John and I really agree on is coming up right now. Yeah, here it comes. Here it okay. comes. Obturation, right now. It is. Mm. It is one thing to move from single point technique or right matching point butter technique right i mean like both of us have done multiple techniques i mean cold lateral i've done it right i've done it i still got a spreader on my endo cassette for goodness sakes and i don't even use it oh okay? and it's still there from the old days just to make me reminisce like i don't ever want to go back there right so <laughs> but we are both using you know warm vertical obturation techniques with carriers, right? That is what we've been using. Yep. Okay. Like it. We love it. <clears throat> love it. Okay. Amazing yep. three-dimensional fills. <clears throat> like, I mean, there for a while when John and I were just kind of figuring out stuff when we were doing our endo episodes, we were sending some radiographs back and forth. Check this lateral canal out. Check this thing out, man. Look how I got that feel. All that kind of stuff. Yep. A lot of it has to do with your irrigation. We're not going to get into that, but... You're going to see some crazy feels when you move into 3D warm vertical obturation. It is next level. Yep. Obturations and the quality of your obturations and what they look like on an x-ray, okay, and the ease of using an obturator, right, I just found out what this took to engineer. Because let me tell you right mm. now, Tulsa figured something <laughs> out. Right? Because when I switched to the edge operators that matched my system, yep. the very first thing that yep. happened is the operator broke before I even get it down in the canal. Okay? Meaning it's too brittle. Yep. So I'm thinking, well, maybe that's just one. Okay? I'll never forget the first time I used it. So then I put another one in the, in the oven. After I cleaned my canal out, okay, and I went back in, and I and I go to the thing, and I'm like, okay, I just got to be a little more careful. So I like to break the handle off to give me more clearance. So I go to break yep, the handle off the second time, and the daggone yep. thing broke at the cotton pliers, and the thing fell on the floor. Okay, the third one I picked up, and I went in, and I'm like, dude, I got to be very very careful here okay so i left the stop or left the the top on and i went i went to the handle, the handle and, I went on. and i inserted it in and i noticed immediately how fluid how viscous the gutta percha surrounding the core was and i'm like oh my goodness i wish i'd have mm -hmm. stuck paper points in the other canals and i spent the better part it goes it goes everywhere everywhere i spent the better part of 15 yeah, minutes we had let me cleaned up. cleaning out the first one yeah my experience same as yours <clears throat> i like gutta core a lot they figured it out when i went to these i was having 
literally a 50% it's breakage rate. A 50% breakage rate on these opt-trades. And don't, and before you're like, oh, you don't know what you're doing, dude. I've been doing carriers a long time. And I've also been using Guttacore a long time. And so is my associate. You we know both had the exact Austin, same experience. I'm sorry. They all you know break. They all break. The associate is doing a pretty good job. Is I'm like, how'd you like those operators? He's like, yeah. He was like, they're a little harder to use, you know? They're a lot harder yeah. to use. But he was getting it done, right? Yeah. And I'm like, well, how many carries do you use? Right. You can do it, but you're going to end up, I don't no. think you save money. Because you end up using twice as many and you hassle with them and you fumble with them. And if they break, sometimes they break halfway down and then that, you have to go back and get all that junk back out me? again. Right. So many times that it's happened to me that I'll get it into the canal and you'll feel the resistance of the hydraulics, right? And you'll push just a little bit and yep. guess what? Plank. Right? Plank. Right. Well, and they have a size verifier in there. And I know that people say, well, you're not using the Yeah, Dude. I was using the size verifier. I did all the things, all the steps. I did all the steps. And I'm telling you, they break. And like Wes said, way too viscous. They go everywhere when they do work. Now, I tried the plastic carriers just to try them. The plastic carriers are awesome. Just I'm not as doing good plastic carriers. as the old. No, no, and I'm not either. I'm just saying if plastic carriers, if that's fine. your thing. John's I think it. you'll see no difference between what Edge has and what Densply has. But if you're using the Guttapur style carrier, I think you should stick yeah. for sure with Dense Supply. So and I hope the Edge makes it a better product. I mean, they probably can figure it out. Like systems, John. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. you can do that. Yeah, I can say, okay, this is an F2 uh, finish file on mm -hmm. Edge Taper Platinum. We just have an F2 operator. Now, paper points. I've been very I happy. Think they're with. fine. I've I've seen no they're significant not, difference. They're fine. They're not as I have no problem. Tightly rolled. They're not as neatly packed. Right. You've got to. You, True. The, the packaging is not quite as good. Right. It's nineteen ninety nine packaging. Yeah, but I'm right? fine. It's fine. <clears throat> it's yeah. fine. <laughs> yeah. Works fine. I love it. Works love fine. It. <clears throat> so I think what we can say, from an endo standpoint, Wes. <clears throat> the only product we would avoid is mm -hmm. the optraders. The K files well, are a, eh, yeah, okay. not so great. Yeah, you. But maybe look at a C file instead. Rotary and reciprocation, though. Wes, why would you not try this file? This this company's files. I can't think of a ro for rotary and reciprocation. I can't think of a hey, reason. Listen, this is great stuff. I can't wait to hear what you guys think about Edge Endo. Are you using it right now? Okay, because if you're using it, our question is, how long will Edge Endo be around? Right? This Ooh. is the conclusion of the show right now. Because they're getting into a I lot mean, of other goodness, stuff I was now. just on their website tonight. You're starting to see, you know, they've been doing burrs for a while called Edge Burrs, right? Mm -hmm. You know, we're not going to mm -hmm. get into burrs. You know, John's tried a few. I've tried a few. We have our mixed results on that. Not saying we've got any definitive yep. analysis or anything like that. Again, you know, you see Edge PPE, you see Edge right. equipment, you see Edge stuff, you see Edge a lot, right? And and the core yep. the core business model here, right, originally was an endodontist mechanical engineer that wanted to cut out the middleman for endodontist and general dentist and provide a high quality premium file to mm -hmm. at a lower cost to eliminate, you know, some of the sales rep stuff. Because I mean they have spent money in marketing, let's just say that. One thing that they do is they do a lot of donation to our military service. So I really appreciate that. You can always, I think, pay a little bit more <clears throat> for and donate to military um, through Edge. Um so they've done some things there, which they're able to do because their cost is lower. What I would say, though, is will Edge be around, right, much longer? And are you a good enough dentist, endodontist, doing root canals to be able to really truly assess the quality of a file now, system? I want to say before you move on from that, will Edge be around? Let's let's say what we mean by that. Yeah. Okay. Cause, because that sounds bad, Wes. You're like, well, we'll edge be, it sounds like they're going to shut nope. down. What we're saying here is, are they going to get bought? Because when you start growing your business outside of your core business, which mm -hmm. we're not saying it's bad, 
when you start getting into burrs and you start getting into diamonds and you start getting into all these other things, that's all fine. Mm -hmm. But is it going to be, are they, are they trying to build themselves into a company that eventually gets bought up by somebody bigger? And what we've seen with companies like say clinicians choice, for instance, which we've talked about several times on the show, you know, when you get bought by a big company, you gain distributorship, which is great, but you oftentimes lose your agility as a company. And you oftentimes also have an issue with quality versus price. Sometimes the quality goes down and the price goes up, which is completely the opposite. The thing I like about this company is the quality is high, the price is low, it's reasonable, mm -hmm. um, and their strategy is to not have a bunch of reps. Their strategy is, hey, you already know how to use these file systems. Mm -hmm. We're just going to make the same thing, but we're going to try to make a couple things better. Yeah, your packaging's not going to be quite as pretty, but you're going you're gonna to be happy and you're going to keep coming back. And I think they've accomplished that, but will another company step in and do what the big company did with, say, Implant Direct, right? And said, well, we're just going to make them our implant company. Just, you man, know, is, that's going to be not, interesting. If you're into business to just sell files, right? That's one thing. I would tell you right now is that if you're not in a business to sell a business, right? You're not thinking, yeah. right? You're not thinking. Right. Everybody wants to grow their business enough that one day... It's more than just a practice well, or more than just a small business. You want it to be something that you can that you can market or that you can sell. I, I'm really impressed with what I've seen so far. You know, we've we've dived we dove into it pretty deep there specifically, but will they be around, right? That that's that our question is you really have to be be very careful, right? And you know, I told John this. I was like, look, man, if if I didn't know what I know knew in the breadth of time that I practiced, let's just say 13 years before I tried Edge, right? I knew of one or two or three file systems. I'd been and had Ruddle and Buchanan over my shoulders, them talking to me. The CE, like junky endo, dive into it. Like I want to do great endo, right? Like I've, I've put my time in to do good endo. Okay. If I didn't have all that, would I immediately come out of school and be like, here, I'm starting up a practice. And Wes and John said, use edge endo, right? I mean, I just don't know that I could say go full bore in because I'm like, man, what if the quality shifts, right? Would you know, right? I think there is something to be said about the safety, and, and this is this is controversial, right, John? There's some safety, maybe, safety factor. We've said this with bigger <clears throat> companies. And yeah. Unless, and, unless they get bought, in knowing that you've got somebody that's not going to release a product, hopefully, hopefully, right, because we can go off on this too, we have on the show, unless it's been vetted to some extent, right? Right, right. Right, how much vetting is going on at Edgendo? All yeah, and that's a great that's a great question, and I think that maybe and who knows what will happen with this review. You know, if you're from Edgendo, maybe we throw this out there. Yeah, we want. If to you're talk. from Edgendo, give us sh drop us a line. Let's talk off air about this very topic. Maybe we have somebody on from their company, and you know what? If you're from Dent Supply, if you're from Brassler. If you're from Cybron, I would love to have a round table like that, right? That would be I mean, really I would love good. to know what what do you what's your response to this because we believe in R&D and we believe in data and published research. We definitely think Edge is behind the eight ball on that more so than these other companies. And some of that's because, you know, you got to have money to pay for research and they're obviously not looking to that's not their primary thing is to fund research. They're piggybacking on the performance of other companies, just as like an implant companies do that are knocking off. Is it good? Is it bad? I would love to hear the edge endo approach. I would love to hear the dense supply Tulsa dental approach and then let the users decide. I think Wes's point is well taken. If you're a new root canal, uh, uh, if, if you're new to root canal therapy as a general dentist, especially, I think it's good to get one of the big companies involved and use their stuff and learn different systems because I think it's important to learn the similarities and the differences between systems and understand that you really can use almost all systems successfully if you understand the basic principles. But 
once you have gained that knowledge, mm-hmm. should you look at a company like this or should you just start with this company? I mean, I have an ended on his friend who got out of school and this is immediately what she bought. She said, I, I came in, I knew immediately. I, I wasn't even going to mess with these other companies. I went right to Edge because I know their stuff works and I wasn't, there was no reason for me to spend more money. So here's the, here's the question. Is there a reason to spend more money? So listeners, company people, give us your thoughts because we would definitely love to f- continue that conversation. But until mm-hmm. that time, Wes, I think we have to say, I mean, Edge is done a really good job I'm with their stuff. actually. Right, I am, you know. I thought I was going to hate it. I mean, I, mean, we, I really yeah. did. I thought I was going to be able to get on here and like bash it. You know, the because final, I, final I, thoughts I just, from me, John, is that I'm impressed. Um, I think that you'd be stupid, right? If you're a seasoned Endo user of one of the two systems we mentioned, and maybe maybe there's other systems that you're using that we're not, I would say you need to give it a shot, right? You need to try it. Give it your unbiased opinion. Give it a shot and go go in, right? Because yeah. to me, I'm not living on the edge, John. Oh right? no! Here we go. <laughs> here we go. Right? That's probably the show title, By right? Using edge in so, right? if you've enjoyed this episode and you've liked what we're bringing, because you know it's been kind of a little while here where we've had a lot of other people on, kind of since COVID, talking about clinical, talking about some business. We are really excited to get to back into just kind of the old dental guys clinical series of just talking about what we're doing in our practice day to day with stuff we know you guys care about. So if you liked what we're talking about, if you have comments, please drop us a line, post it, share it, like it, subscribe to it, be on all the socials with us. Tell us what's working for you. Tell us what you like. Tell us what's, you know, give us your good endo stories. Um, Show us your beautiful lateral canals, whatever you want to show off, whatever you want to complain about. Let us kind of hear what your thoughts are and make sure that you're telling your friends about the dental guys, letting them know what's going on in our world so that we can continue to bring you the content that really day to day is helping you to become a better clinician, a better leader, a better, uh, you know, research, better understanding of research. We're trying to continue to, to be at the forefront of that. So for Wes, I'm John, and thanks for tuning in to this episode of The Dental Guys.